Naisula has asked me to remind you to respond to the issue of your public statement never to talk to your appointing authority. Although I told you that uh, okay, on, only Speaker. fools don't change their mind, this but in Naisula I would want the public to hear from you. Sasa, Naisula, do you want to repeat the statement for me? At where's your girl? How? Uh, let, let me let me say no, this. I understand no, you. but let me say this for clarity, uh, uh, Chairman. You know, apart from asking questions during vetting for competence, what you understand about mining and all, we also vet the temperament of a nominee. The same way you've been asked about lifestyle, it's neither here or there, really. But even temperament of a nominee is very important because it shows your leadership skills. Initially, you thought this, and now you're here. There's really nothing wrong with answering how you're going to relate with His Excellency the President when you're working. Excellent. So, Mr. Speaker, if I may quote uh, the statement when, like, Mimi ni onge Naruto nini? Mimi ni niende wapi Naruto? Mr. Speaker, hakuna mtu ya meeleza vizuri kukuliko. Mpumbavu pekea kendo abadilishi mawazo. Mtu mpumbavu. Pili, he ni clarion call to serve the country. I have been critic, a great critic of this government, like others I did before. Now I've been given, I've been given an opportunity. <coughs> an opportunity has been availed to me to come and create that difference that I've been talking about all this time. And that is exactly what I'm going to do bring new energy, new ideology, new thinking, because after all, all of us are serving one that nation, do. one people. Well put. That will yeah. do. Other members, now. Uh, Capital, to ensure that we don't get into situations like that. Like when KQ had its strike, it was devastating to the economy. But we had a minister in charge, and uh, there wasn't much that was done until now it came to threats, to courts, and all that. But at that particular time, the country is grounded. How do you intend to be different such that this ministry is useful in terms of ensuring that this is not a country that chases away investors because of labor disputes? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Nominee. Unfair labor practices, very common in our country. The labor and employment courts are actually flooded with all these cases where we just don't do it right. You are going to be the custodian of government policy as regards employment. One of the most unfair labor practices in the country is for the government to take interns, stud uh, young people, on internships. One year after that, they are let to go. And yet those government departments soon thereafter start advertising for positions. And we also know that people go on retirement, natural attrition. Would you be bold enough to advise the government that these interns should actually be the first port of call for the government in matters employment? And as we speak, they are looming uh, strikes because of the first five or six cohorts who have been released. Nomini, you can answer those three. Uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, let me start with uh, Honorable Mbui on the issue of uh, Inua Jami. I think the challenge we've had with Inua Jami is that, uh, and I've done my, uh, my research, is that people have tried to be creative, and it is now improving, but uh, it's, it's an old syndrome. And where that's where we have devolution, whereby you, you are giving 2,000 shillings to an old grandmother, and you want that grandmother to travel from the small village in the middle of nowhere and go for 100 kilometers to the county headquarters to get the money. But this eventually was, was uh, w went down further, even to M-Pesa and other systems. And my, my study is that we are still not being able to get to the ground completely.
to the people who are most deserving. And one of the things that I'll do is work closely with the county governments and also with the national government system to go to the village-based system, not only for identifying the people who deserve the Inua Jamii funds, but also to collect data of the ones who exit, but also on the payment module. Why should I spend 300 shillings to travel to get my money or to the nearest M-Pesa place because some of these old people don't have the M-Pesa uh, monies and then uh, travel back uh, you know, with the same money. So I'm going to find a system of getting the money to the people at their doorstep, more or less, uh, in a progressive manner. As you know, we already have about one point, close to 1.8 people in the system and uh, looking at how we can get 1. it to 1.8 million or 1.8 people? 1.8 million beneficiaries. Uh, people, and we are, want to move it to, according to uh, what has been discussed in the cabinet I served in, close to 2.5, and continue to onboard them. But I'm also concerned, uh, Mr. Speaker, about the classification of our people who are suffering from various disabilities because the monies don't go to the disabled person, they go to the household. And so you find that many disabled people fall through the cracks. If you've got one or two members of a family, then that becomes one unit. And furthermore, the disabled even have at times higher challenges than the abled. And we may need to, to be fair in this country and see how what we can do to give them slightly more money compared to what we have. Initially, everything was pegged on the US dollar. It was supposed to be 20 US dollars, but with how the economy has grown now, they are getting 12 to 15 uh, US dollars, not the original 20 that was thought of when you look at the inflation and uh, the changes that are there. So this is an issue that is very close to me. I mean, the question about Machakos, I think there was uh, uh, maybe a miscommunication because the government of Machakos that I served in as a governor were never collected names for for Inua Jamii or social protection. Uh, the names we were collecting was for water mapping. We were doing research to find out what are the needs in terms of water delivery in the area as a marker of poverty. But our data was for county government. The national government was collecting its own, its own data. Moving down to the second question uh, by uh, Moshmiwa Bayer about uh, disputes. I agree with you. And uh, I'm going to set up, if not, if uh, vetted and uh, this committee proposes my name uh, for appointment, an early warning system. And I'm going to look at all the sectors and have people who are confidently can come. I keep an open door policy for those members of parliament that have even come to my office to see me. You know, I keep an open door policy for the, uh, for the different sectors to talk to me. Let me know uh, what is going on and let our systems know so that we can get and arrest them, as you said, early, you know, take care of this wound before it becomes uh, problematic and before the disruptions that are there. And also when the disruptions are there, I'm very good at bringing people together and being able to bring harmony, which is one of the big successes that I did when I got into the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife. I found a lot of people warring and fighting each other and was able to bring peace and calm within a very short time. I remember having discussions with Honorable Ishungwa about it, and uh, I was able to bring peace and sanity, and I believe I can be able to do the same because of the experience that I had in Machakos. Lastly, Honorable Burungara, thank you very much. I'm quite concerned. Uh, I looked at, uh, when I went to uh, school in the US, I used to get uh, summer jobs working in a factory, and it was all those factories whereby uh, you're collecting wood as it comes down the drive. And there are strict occupational health hazard conditions. You have to have the helmet, the gloves, and then after every two hours, you took a break. And every two hours, you either took a small break of 15 minutes or a half break for lunch, another two, uh, uh, 15 minute break. So there are breaks throughout the day because what way to see Opunda, Kufanisho Kazi in those very uh, bad conditions. So. The occupation health hazards and also working conditions of workers will be very key uh, to my uh, work if I am, you know, if I, am, if I go through this, uh, this process. And part of it is also the internship program because it doesn't make sense that a young person goes to a bank, they work very well, and uh, they serve in that internship, they are taught, and then when employment jobs come, they are let out. And I'm going to bring a policy to cabinet if I go through this process to ensure that if you are taken in as a, 
what do you call as as an intern in a ministry and you don't have problems and you're okay and you pass a certain mark into internship because some can be taken and they're not fitting you pass a certain mark that when positions of employment of entry level are taken that you start with those ones and you're going to talk with the public service commission because fair is fair fair is fair thank you